Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here with the British middleweight boxing champion, Denzel Bentley. So it's awesome to have you in the studio. So you won your title back in November. Yeah, yeah. Um, how's life changed since you became the British middleweight champion? Yeah, it's been all right. Um, making a bit of noise in the boxing world and it's a lot more attention from people yep. like outside of you know the boxing community. Mm. So yeah. I've seen you doing like, interviews with and podcasts and stuff. Yeah. Has anyone ever painted you before? Yeah, they have though, but oh, really? not, not like yeah. this though. They just like um, painted the picture and sent it over oh, to cool. me. Oh, cool. Which is kind That's of cool. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to start the painting now. Remember to subscribe and let's get into the video. So I'm painting on an oil primed linen canvas that I've toned with raw umber. And the canvas is 60 centimeters tall by 50 centimeters wide. I start the painting using a long Rosemary & Co. filbert brush. And I'm just using raw umber to sketch in the general composition of where I want to place Denzel's head, uh, his shoulders and his hand and the title belt on the canvas. Once I've worked this out and placed this down, I can then get into a bit more detail and I start working on the portrait, putting down the general tone and value of the shadow and the part of the face in light. As I paint, I'm trying to maintain some distance between me and my canvas. And I'm pretty much applying the brush strokes at arm's length, holding the brush quite far back. And as I apply the brush strokes, I'm painting more with my shoulder than with my wrist. One good thing about trying to paint at arm's length is that it allows me to see the bigger picture and the overall shapes and proportions a lot clearer. Also, I can just flick my head between the model and my canvas and see them both in the same shot. Also, one reason why I like standing up and painting is that it means I can easily step back from my canvas. And again, this helps me see the bigger picture and the overall shapes a lot clearer. I'm trying to work from the big shapes down into the smaller shapes and smaller details. So it's good to get all the big things down first in the right place. So when I was training at a, a classical atelier, we used to actually paint from a vantage point. So you would paint the portrait the same size that you see it when you were standing in that point and then you would walk up make your mark and then walk back to that point which is really helpful in order to sort of reinforce that getting some distance from your artwork but here I'm just painting using comparative measurement but I'm still trying to keep some distance between the canvas when I started I was using a really long brush some artists for example Thomas Gainsborough uh, he would actually paint with a brush attached to a broomstick and he would stand on the other side of the room and paint the model's face in just using a broomstick with a brush on the end. And then after that, then he would get into more details. So getting some distance between your painting is really helpful. So here I'm rendering the half tones using a filbert brush and the half tones sit between the shadow value and the light value. They help turn the form and make your painting look really 3D. Now I'm layering on the highlights I'm using quite a bit thicker paint to paint down the highlights and also when I paint the specular highlights they're quite a lot colder in temperature than the other flesh tones and this is because the specular highlight is a reflection of the light source and the light that I'm using to light the pose is quite a cold light. So here I'm masking in the area of his hoodie in light and then I will mix a darker mix for the area in shadow and then paint a half tone between these two. And now I'm starting to work on the title belt that Denzel's holding. So the belt that he's holding is the Lord Lonsdale Challenge Belt, commonly known as the Lonsdale Belt. And it's the oldest championship belt in British professional boxing. So the belt was first introduced by the 5th Earl of Lonsdale. And the very first belt was won way back in 1909. So these belts were awarded to British boxing champions. So Denzel won this belt back in November and in order to keep the belt outright he has to defend it three times. So I actually first met Denzel before he won the British middleweight title. So we both live in the same area of South London so I have a few mutual friends with him. I remember one day I was training boxing in the park and Denzel walked by and the friend I was training with knew him. And anyway, Denzel came over and he actually gave me a few boxing tips, showed me a few tricks and techniques, and it was really cool learning from him. And then a few weeks later, he went on to win 
the British middleweight title. And later this month, he's fighting for the Commonwealth title. So if he wins that, then he's definitely going to be a lot more famous. And also the next step up from a Commonwealth title is the European title. And then the step after that is the world title. So he's definitely heading in the right direction. If you're into boxing, I definitely suggest watching some of Denzel's fights on YouTube. He's undefeated. His style is really cool to watch. He switches stances, often during the fights from Southport to Orthodox. He's very technical, very quick. And I believe out of his 14 fights, he's had 12 knockout wins. And his fights are always very exciting. One other tip about painting shiny objects and shiny surfaces is I often find it's good to paint the general shapes, the, the mid-tones, the shadow tones first, and then to paint the highlights on top with quite thick paint. And for the highlights on the belt, I'm pretty much using pure white. I have added maybe a touch of raw umber into it, but it is really quite bright. And having this contrast between the mid-tone and the highlight is what really gives objects that metallic, shiny effect. So here I'm painting the portrait of the 5th Earl of Lonsdale, Hugh Lowther, who was the founder of the Lonsdale belt. So I think it's quite cool having a sort of mini portrait within the portrait, as when I'm designing a composition. It's always nice to have a few different areas of visual interest, so that the viewer's eye can move around the painting and look at your painting for longer. When I paint Lord Lonsdale's face, I'm trying to keep it quite simple, so I draw the shadow shape first, the shadow pattern under his chin, and then I paint the light flesh tone for the area of the face in light. And as it's so small, if I can get these shapes correct and get the values correct, I don't need to add in too much details. As this is a secondary focal point really, I want the main focal point to be Denzel's portrait, and then for the viewer's eye to look at the belt and the shiny gold on the belt and then the portrait of Lord Lonsdale. So I'm trying to simplify it, but still make it accurate in proportion and value. And as this portrait is encased in glass, in order to create this effect, I'm just adding on some quite bold, simple highlights just with a single brush stroke. This instantly gives it that shiny glass-like appearance. And I'm also making sure that these highlights correlate with the same highlights on the belt. So now I'm painting Denzel's hand and what I've done to start is I've just painted the general shape with a general mid-tone value and then a shadow value for the area of the fingers in shadow. And I've tried to keep it really simple and then on top of this I can then start adding a bit more detail and complexity and start painting the light half tones on the fingers and the highlights on the fingers and the knuckles and also the dark half tones around the knuckles and around the shadow edges. And then I can also paint the really dark accents in between the fingers. So here I'm rendering the folds in Denzel's hoodie and I'm really trying to pay close attention to the edges of the transitional tones. I'm looking to see where they're soft, where they're sharp, how soft, how sharp the different edges are. And I'm trying to pick out variety within the shapes and this is going to give it that really realistic cloth-like appearance.
Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, give Denzel a follow on his Instagram, which is 2sharp underscore D, and I'll put a link to that in the description. He's an awesome boxer, so he's fighting for the Commonwealth title this month. Yeah. So big things to come. And yeah, so give him a follow. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.